Okay, so just to get us prepared for our interview, I thought we could make a drink I had one time on my birthday. There's a crazy amount of alcohol in it. This looks like a lot. <laughs> I think it'll I'm loosen excited. us up a little bit. Awesome. I'm down for it. So I'll light it on fire and then over there you have some cinnamon. Like, not all of it, but some. So I get to be the salt babe. Exactly. Yes. So this is my friend Rajat Gupta. Thanks for joining us today, Raj. Of course. Raj is a wonderful um, art director that I met a while ago. Raj, why don't you tell us how we met? Four years ago, I think, we, uh, mm -hmm. I was invited to a workbook event for a portfolio review through a boss of mine which I know you harassed for a while. I did, I uh, did. I went to your boss and said, um, I have to have somebody from your company, and he threw you under the bus, I believe. It turned out to be okay, I guess. I yeah. think so. He's like, yeah, what are you doing this weekend, this Saturday? And I'm like, I don't know, not, no plans really. He's like, do you want to just go see portfolios, meet like-minded people? He's like, not really, but okay. <laughs> so I did end up meeting you over there. That uh, on It was April, I think, four years ago. and. Uh, yeah, it was a very formal setup. I know you were like working the whole space and mm -hmm. I met you in passing really quick. It's like, oh, you are Raj and let's get you seated here. And then we started, but four years later, here we are, friends sitting and talking about workbook. And drinking tiki drinks. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers. I have to say, I was looking back at us and thinking, when was that moment then that, when that light switched? And I, I do remember, it was when I called you and you answered the phone. You answered the phone when I called. That was the minute where I was like, huh, we, I think we're friends because I believe you were on a trip like on the other side of the world at the time. I don't I even remember South where you were. Africa You were somewhere. in South Africa. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> where do you spend your time online? I start my day with getting my um, news and getting all the industry information through people that I follow on Twitter. That's kind of like the Twitter timeline is my news feed for real because I never watch news on TV. And then for work, Mashable and Ad Week and Ad Age, just to get to know all the ins and outs of what's happening in the ad world. Right. Who got fired? Oh, no, right. Just kidding. That's uh, <laughs> Those and definitely uh, YouTube for, um, you know, video references and what's happening out there. And just well, it's a good place to get inspired. It's a good place to see what has been done, what is what has not been done. And where people are moving to. Where, I mean, yeah. you jokingly said fired, but also who just got hired and yeah, where they're at that, and yes. things like that. Yeah. So what are you noticing in terms of industry trends? One of the things, because I work in the digital space, people's attention span is shrinking on a daily basis. Right. We are bombarded with information at any given point of time. That's why like a minute, 90 second long or a 60 second long piece is not working anymore. To me, it's not, to a lot of people, it's not. Like if I'm scrolling through Facebook and there's an ad on my feed, it better be quick and it better be smart. Like six mm. second videos are something that's right. we're getting into, you know. That's changing as a trend, like no one's doing long form content. It's great, don't get me wrong. Like I like film, I like longer commercials. But at the same time, if we want to hit more people with our information, with what we, small. with our content, small, bite-sized content is what we call it. The content hasn't changed, the medium has changed. The way people are consuming content has changed. Brands are also not taking them too seriously these days, which is amazing because people relate right. to it more and then they, they feel they're not being sold to. Right, so, so humor. Think, yeah, humor. How do you use the workbook? I know there's an online version and there's a print version, which you very dedicatedly have been hand delivering it to me every year. I keep that on top of my shelf at work. Uh, it's a very good point of reference for me and my coworkers, especially our directors uh, and designers, just to see, you know, the kind of work that you have and you represent because it's you right there. Yeah. I just pick it up and I scroll through stuff that I want to see. I find a photographer and I see their work. I also do go online, but I would say I see it more so on the book yeah. uh, then versus going online because this is so easy access than just trying to find it online. A smart person would already will actually look at the workbook and figure out what needs to happen because there's so much good information on there. We work in this industry where things get so saturated so mm -hmm. quickly that it's hard to find fresh uh, approach to things. Uh, and uh, I think if there, there was some way we could connect and just, you know. Uh, Give me a list give you a list and not just people that 
uh, who have done that work and see their work because obviously that's already sitting in the workbook and I can have access to that, but people who you've interacted with, who you are maybe repping or going to rep in the future. And, uh, and uh, we do this actually, shortlist. It's yeah. exactly what we do. You guys, all you have to do is tell us what you want and we'll generate a list. Yeah. We absolutely do it. And you share with your colleagues, your team you said? It's there, yeah, it's one book for all. So I do share it. I can always bring you more. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what makes talent stand out to you online or in a printed piece like workbook? It's funny uh, because workbook events, the portfolio reviews actually really help in things like that because I have a name to put on a face. On a face. Right. And I'm usually like getting these marketing mails and promotional, you know, just pieces. promotion pieces and they're great. And I feel bad because they, they just stack up, but they're not really helping me because I'm not I haven't met these people, right. and if I don't have the face to put, put on that name, uh, I don't know who they are. So I do remember meeting certain people at workbook events where I saw their work, amazing work, most of all of them have great work, but then I had an interaction with them, so it's that interaction, that personal connection that makes me identify them, and obviously that's, that's how I think I find that people I want to work with because I know who they are as people. Right, who am I going to be married because to? They're all, because they're all, they're all talented people. Right. There's no doubt in that, but I identify talent online and in, uh, and in print um, just by getting to know remembering them. and yeah. know, getting to know them on a personal level a little bit. What social do you predominantly use? Facebook is really personal. So I don't necessarily, I, follow, I might follow their pages, because they have, you know, their brand pages and their company pages. I don't necessarily am friends with them. With the but audience. on Instagram, I follow their channels. I follow their, you know, their, their feed. Their feed. And what happens with that is you interact with one another. You see somebody in a different light. Mm -hmm. You don't see them in a workspace. You don't see them, you know, in a professional environment. So you really know who they are. So I think Instagram definitely, considering it's a visual medium. So that's sort of helps. a middle place between your personal and your public and, sure, your, and sure. your professional and, world. Yeah. So do you like it when um, the, the artists or the talent reach out to you directly? I definitely don't like to be called just like randomly don't call getting me. a call. No. If I've not met you, then don't call me. People have done that and it's just not, it's, it put, puts a bad taste in my mouth. I think, and I can say the same thing for them also, if I call them out of the blue and we don't know who we are or who I am, they'll be like, who are you calling me? I appreciate the promotional piece, but again, uh, I, I, I see a lot of, lot of wastage in that. I see a lot of, there is no personal connection, so you're sending me something just because you found me online and you know, you want to send me. I appreciate the, the gesture, but I also think because we get so many of those on a daily um, basis, basis yeah. it's just too much. And eventually, it, I hate to say that, people, it just goes In into the, the trash. trash. And it's terrible because that's someone's work. I try to be very respectful of that, but I think we, given the kind of world we're living in, everything is available online. You just like, we need to make that personal connection. I do, I don't mind when people reach out to me on LinkedIn, just saying, a, you know, just saying a hi or just, you know, introducing themselves because then I have their, I, they're not pushing it really, but they're, they're, they just made, a, made an initial contact. It's a space where professionals connect. So I appreciate that. It's there for me to look at if I have time and if whenever not, I'm looking. Right. At least it doesn't feel like a push. Right. What about email? Email's fine. Email's fine as long as it doesn't happen on a weekly basis. Once a quarter is great, just a reminder. Keeps you in your, yeah, yeah and, keeps them in your head yeah, and a little I bit. I actually, I, I do save people's uh, names. I have a list going that I just save it just because I met them somewhere and I really like their work or I, mm. I really like their personalities because it's very important for me to like them as people. Right. And not just because they're talented. So when somebody is actually having that conversation with you, um, is there anything that you can say to them that would put them at ease or make them feel less anxious or nervous about those interactions, whether it's the creative call or the first time meeting you or... Give I them think, a little advice. I think don't oversell it, to be honest. If uh, I'm calling you, yeah. you're, the, you're, you're there. If, I'm, if I've called you and we're having a conversation, that means I know you already. Right. Like, that you can do what I want you to do. Right. So if you keep overselling it, that just, that doesn't make it's a it turn off. better. It's a turn off. So sure. It's just like being in a relationship. You, you don't push anybody too much. You know where to draw a line. Mm. And it's for, your, for the benefit of that relationship. I'll give you an example. I remember I went for an interview. My boss was talking to me at that time. And she was like, well, uh, tell us a little about yourselves. And I remember I pulled out my website and I showed some stuff. She's like, well, you've already, we've already seen this. That's why you're here. 
tell us about yourself. So I realized that I didn't have to sell them on my work anymore because that's why I was in the room. So it's always important and I think that stayed with me for forever just because it makes sense, you know, like after a point, you know that you're here for a reason. Now let's take it further without overselling it. What are your turn on turn offs for networking events? If you're meeting in a in a kind of an informal setup at a party or like at, at at a gathering, I can find your name through a list. After a point, I think you have to stop talking about your work and talk about a little bit about who you are and um, who am I? Like, how much mm-hmm. do we know about each other as people? And I think I keep going back to this thing about the personalization, and, uh, like the knowing each other at a personal level a little bit. Make right. an effort about that and not just try to sell work because ultimately I will work with somebody that I can be on set with and have a conversation with then just be like, all right, the job's done. Let's, let's just, I can't wait to get the hell out of here. I would give up on a great talent just because we didn't have pleasant. a personal connection. Yeah. And I think that's very important to me. Do you have um, turn on and turn offs when you're dealing with the talent on either the creative call or even on set? If there's a lack of collaboration and people are not uh, receptive to someone else's idea on set, whether it's not just a creative's idea, but it's production's ideas, you know, somebody else is like, hey, the light's not working, let's move somewhere else, things like that. And if I see the people are being very Resist- rigid yeah. about it. That is a big turn off. I'm, at the end, we might eventually do what they were saying, but I like when people are open about exploring options and are open to other people's suggestions and opinions. What would you say is the most cha- difficult or most challenging part of your job? Being inspired and being um, coming up with stuff, fresh stuff on a daily basis. It's hard as a creative, you know, you, you like, Today I came up with 20 ideas and then tomorrow I only have two, for example. What do you do when you have a creative block? Honestly, in the last four or five years, I found traveling a big, big way to get out of myself, but get out of my own way, because sometimes I feel like I just get so stuck with things in my own head Mm -hmm. that it's hard to get out of it. On a day-to-day basis, I kind of like, I leave the workspace that I'm in, I go out for a walk, I go to the coffee shop, I watch people. I think watching people is really, really, helpful for me because I feel like I'm just like building stories around these people that I don't know where they're going where they're coming from airports for example I go to airports earlier because I'm waiting and seeing what's happening and I'm like fabricating stories around these people which help me in my work because I come back and I'm like thinking about things that don't really exist maybe I'm making them up but it's it's amazing how it helps and I think when I travel and you know me like I I travel a lot whenever I can uh, I think that's a big way for me to get my mental block out. Okay, so I asked you the hardest part of your job, but what is your favorite part of your job? Honestly, creating every day. Like, I, there's so many things about my job that I love. Like, this is an industry where we get paid to come up with fun stuff. Like, not a lot of industries. A lot like for that. that, sure. You know, people hate their nine to five desk jobs. I love going into work every single morning. I go into this office every morning. I meet the people that, that, that think like me, that like, you know, that have similar interests. And then we get together and make awesome stuff hopefully it's awesome Um, and not a lot of people get to say that you then you see your work out there in the world people looking at it people interacting with it it's such a great feeling it's so magical that you something that is sitting in your brain just turns into turns into something and then it's tactile and then it's a book and it's a it's a commercial it's a Super Bowl ad and it's just such a great feeling Describe the perfect project for you. To me, a perfect project is like when everybody who is part of that project is excited. Right from the client services to production to creatives to the client eventually. Like, yes, things need to get done. There are deadlines for it. You have to make it and get it out of the door and move on to the next. But mm-hmm. if everybody in the room says they're proud of what they're making and they're very excited about what they're making, that just makes it a perfect project. And I've been very lucky. Um, thankfully to be on a few projects like that where we went out and made awesome things and which the world thought was awesome, people thought was awesome, we won awards. What is the best industry advice you've ever received? Just be sensitive and kind to people or to, to whatever, like if your work that you're putting out there is not sensitive to people, like you're not thinking about people because they're the ones who are your, who are watching stuff, who are your consumer, who are buying things that you're trying to sell. So your consumer. So yeah. yeah, if you're not sensitive towards them, nothing is going to matter. So that, and also like be your own audience first mm-hmm. and use that as a filter 
Yeah, right. Too. Because if you, if you will, as an audience, not buy what you're selling, <laughs> what nobody you outside right. of these four walls are going to buy that. Fair. So I think that's a huge, it was a huge test for me. It was a huge learning and I use that filter every day now whenever I come up with something. So what would you say your secrets to success are? <sighs> I don't know if I'm successful, but... <laughs> do you, well, that's a good question. Do you feel like you're successful in this industry? I certainly do. The secret, I don't know. Like, I didn't do anything. Like, I didn't go in thinking that this is the next step I need to do. There was no calculative moves, if you may. I just think that you have to be smart, you have to be creative, and you have to be kind. Mm. You have to keep doing what you do, keep doing it best every day. You are your own competition. Like, right. make yourself better every day. How do you define success? Because I personally define success as happiness in this world. Absolutely. I think to answer that question, I am very successful if I can because I'm very happy. And if there's something that I'm not happy about, I change it. Like mm. being excited every morning to go into work and excited every evening to see the people that you love is the measure of being successful. Absolutely. Thanks for coming today. Absolutely. Just Thank you for we having these me. awesome drinks that we made. Cheers. There you go. Cheers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.